Question 15. The following picture can be drawn to demonstrate the hiker's journey. We want to find the direction beta that the hiker must walk to get back to the hostel. Using co-interior angles, we can see that Thus, the angle HLC is 90. Lastly, again using co-interior angles, now we can work out the length of X using the cosine rule. Note here that the angle needs to be in degrees. So our calculator must be set to degrees. If we can determine the angle HCL and hence the angle alpha, we can determine beta. The sine rule can be used as follows. Thus, beta is equal to 360 take 23.5, which is 336.5 degrees. So, the hiker must walk 336.5 degrees true to get back to the hostel. Question 16. We need to determine the probability of waiting between 10 and 12 minutes in a queue at the supermarket. Waiting 10 minutes is equivalent to an X of negative 1. And waiting 12 minutes is equivalent to an X equal to 1. Before we work out the required probability, we first need to determine the value of a. f of x is a probability density function, and thus we know that We can now evaluate the required probability as follows. Therefore, the probability of waiting between 10 and 12 minutes is 0 0.6875. Question 17. A snail is travelling along a straight line from point A with a velocity of 1.4 times ln of 1 plus t squared, where t is the time travelled in minutes. An ant passes point A 12 minutes after the snail. The ant 
travels with a constant acceleration of 2 cm per second. It passes the snail at t equals 15. We need to determine the ant's velocity at point A. But first, we will determine the distance travelled by the snail in 15 minutes. Given that, the distance travelled can be found by integrating the velocity function We can work out the ant's velocity function using the fact that we are told that the ant travels from point A and overtakes the snail in 3 minutes. Given that the distance from A to the snail is 76.0431. Now we have C. So the ant's velocity can be given by the ant's velocity at point A is equivalent to finding the velocity at t equals zero, i.e. Thus, the ant's velocity at point A is 22 0.3477 centimetres per minute. Alternatively, the integration could be solved in the run mode as follows. Note here, this warning means that there may be more solutions to the equation we are trying to solve. However, in this case, there is only one value of C, so we don't need to worry about this warning. Question 18. First, we want to find the probability that one randomly selected individual has an IQ of at least 120. The IQ of individuals is normally distributed with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 16. So we can evaluate the probability by using the NCD mode in the statistics app. So, the probability that one randomly selected individual has an IQ greater than 120 is 0 0.1056. Now consider choosing 9 people at random, where the probability that an individual has an IQ greater than or equal to 120 is 0 0.1056. We can let X equal the number of people with an IQ greater than or equal to 120. X can be modelled with a binomial distribution where the number of trials is 9 and the probability of success is 0 0.1056. We want to find the probability that no more than two of the individuals have an IQ of at least 120. We need to find the probability that X 
is less than or equal to 2. We can work out this probability using the BCD mode. Thus, the probability that no more than two individuals have an IQ of at least 120 is 0 0.9392. Question 19. To determine when the greatest number of flying foxes are present, we need to work out a function for the number of flying foxes in the region at a given time, t. To do this, we start by evaluating the number of flying foxes entering and leaving by time t. Given that we know the rates at which the flying foxes come and go, the number of flying foxes entering by time t and the number of flying foxes leaving by time t now let the number of flying foxes in the region at time t be equal to n of t. The rate of change of the number of flying foxes is equal to, which implies Note here that C is equal to C1 plus C2. Where F is equal to D plus C. We need to determine F. We are told that at 7pm, which is equivalent to T equaling 0, there are a hundred flying foxes, i.e. This function can be plotted using our calculator and the maximum determined as follows. Thus, the maximum occurs at 2 hours and 58 minutes after 7pm, i.e. 9.58pm, and there are 7,034 flying foxes.